Oh man, is this gonna be fun. It'll be a little fun. Uh, today we got uh, this compressor right here. It's a Carlisle 06E, I believe, Echo. Uh, this is our AC. It's labeled as an AHU. Um, main AHU right there. So this is an old R22 system. Split winding compressors. Um, this one's bad right here, number one. It used to be something that I've never seen before. It used to be all tech is what it was called. These all tech controllers right here. Um, a while ago, my buddy and I came in, we ripped everything out and then we put everything on um, like just normal pressure controls. We re rewired everything, ran a bunch of new conduit, put it all on, um, like I said, just normal high pressure, low pressure, and then oil. We didn't end up hooking up the oil um, before we found out that this compressor was bad. But what we're gonna go back in with, uh, we have controllers, so we're gonna go back in with some boards, transducers. I got a whole box over here full of parts. Um, new dryer, contactors, transducers. We're gonna come in, we got some pipe and some ball valves. We're gonna go ahead, take these old ones out clean up some of this piping and then we're going to put ball valves around these dryers um, that way when you have to change dryers on this thing you just ball valve ball valve change the dryer should be pretty simple um, the hardest part for this is going to be changing that compressor just because the space is so low I don't know if it's how well y'all can see but this is kind of what we're working with today so it's gonna kind of suck getting under there, but we'll get it done. All right, so kind of the situation we got here is we got this one compressor, bad compressor, but it has gas. And then we have good compressor, but no gas. So I got my recovery machine here. First thing I'm gonna start doing is setting up. I'm gonna pull the gas out of this compressor and push it into this compressor. So we're gonna use what's called a push-pull method where you push I'm gonna, like I said, pull from here, push into there. I'm gonna have to hook up gauges and whatnot and watch my high side pressures um, to make sure I'm not overcharging or about to blow out this compressor. But that's what we're gonna start with doing first. So you can see liquid line comes in and then goes out up into the evaporator. It's not a very far run. So we're gonna put uh, another magnet on this solenoid and then we're basically just gonna be pulling from this circuit, pushing everything I can into this circuit with it just wide open. And then before we start this compressor up, we're gonna have to make sure there's no liquid in that crankcase because I'm probably gonna fill it up with liquid right now. But that's what we're gonna start doing right now. Okay, so we got this set up. We got down here, we got a couple straighters. So we got circuit one in the back, circuit two in the front. We're gonna be pulling from one, going into our recovery machine, coming out on that yellow hose and pushing it into our circuit so if i open this can you open both of those please he's going to open both of those nope just on the the little switches the little dial looking things get air out of it. Oh, i'm getting it out all over here so if you just open both of those yeah and then that's going to bring us pressure right here and i'm going to purge everything from right here boom got a lot of oil in there so what I've done now is I've purged all of these hoses going all the way through the recovery machine and all the way back. And now all I gotta do is we're not gonna turn the recovery machine on yet. We're just gonna open this and let it suck in as much as it can before we turn that on. All right, now we got our high side gauge on right here and we're making sure that we're not putting too much pressure to where it's gonna blow out anything on this second circuit. So right now we're at uh 75 to 80 pounds or 85 pounds so we still got a ways to go you can see this hose jumping right now we're pushing in a bunch of liquid so once that stops pushing in by itself then we'll start up that machine and start pushing it in but until then we're just going to let it do it by itself since we're waiting on this uh we're waiting on this to kind of equalize we're at like 105 110 over here 125 over here waiting on that to equalize before we turn it on gonna start getting everything set up to change this compressor so we're doing a bunch today it's gonna be probably an all-day event maybe even two three-day event 
So got to try to do things at the same time as much as we can. All right, so we got these two equalized back here. You can see we're back here. We're gonna take apart this compressor right now, isolating it. We're gonna take it off that, that uh, skid. These two gauges are isolated, which means we're not gonna move anymore between these without some help from our recovery machine. So what I'm gonna do is turn that on. And again, we're sucking from this side, pushing it into this side. So really what you wanna be looking at is your pressure for the side that you're pushing into, you wanna make sure you're not getting too high. Usually I try to cut it off at like 350, 350 PSI. All right, so we got this compressor completely disconnected. We got the wiring done. Got your suction bell end done. Discharge done. We got this, the can pulled off, set to the side. Um, all we're gonna have to do next is just hook it up to this winch here, or this chain hoist, and then pull it out. We got this rope over here that we're gonna help pull it out with. And then, um, yeah, that'll be it, we'll have it out. Uh, as you can see we got the compressor out off the tray we still got that recovery machine going sucking out all the gas we're gonna pop the head on this and see kind of what happened because there's a lot of black oil all right here so we're gonna move it over into the light and then pop these heads off and see what happened push that thing or pull it. You you pull, I push. Why you want it to both pull it? Oh, careful. <laughs> That's some good lighting right there. That's some good lighting right there. See what's going on inside this thing. You want to do this? Right. Come on, baby, come on, M12, come on. Come on, M12. Sir. Why are you unscrewing Because you didn't unscrew that one. Dang. Feels like it's loose already, yeah? Huh? Oh. Woo! Got some signs of overheating in here, for sure. Look at the heads, the heads are like baked. And that's definitely signs of overheating. I wonder if these things even rotate. A little bit, uh. 
Oh, that one might be broke. That one might be broke, sir. The way that it just moved. You can see some definite signs of overheating in here. This is your reed valve that I'm pushing on. And these pistons, they are not wanting to move. You can see this gasket's still mostly in good shape, but it looks like right around here, it blew out. You can see all the oil where it's shiny. It looks like it blew that head gasket, which alongside with this, the signs of overheating. So this thing must've got real hot in order to blow out that head gasket. Pulled out this other head on the other side. Looks about the same. Definitely signs of overheating. This thing must've got super hot, so. Everything else looks good, just I bet those windings are all burned up too. All right, so we got this all done. This has been transferred over. Now we got nothing um, in this circuit, right? You can see I'm open here and I got nothing, right? Got my recovery machine off. So what I'm gonna start doing now, I'm gonna cut this pipe right here, right? So we got this pipe that goes up into the ceiling. I'm gonna unsweat it from a 90 that's up there. I'm gonna cut it right here. I got a ball valve, I'm gonna cut it right here. I got a ball valve that I'm gonna put right after this sight glass. And then I'm gonna do a new piece of pipe, basically taking out this and that straighter that somebody put way up there. And I'm gonna do a new piece of pipe all the way up. I got new hydrosorbs for right here. And then I'm gonna put another ball valve. It's kind of hard to see, but there's those vertical lines right here. I'm gonna put another ball valve back in there that way, if you ever have to change um, the solenoid, the dryers, the sight glass, you have ball valves on either side. That way you can isolate real easy. And then also, I'm actually changing this solenoid today too. So I'm gonna take uh, the solenoid out that's in there and replace it with a new one.
got new solenoid new ball valve here look at that pretty looking feller back there and then over here on this side he went ahead sweat a ball valve that ball valve in right there and then new piece of pipe all the way up to that 90 up there so uh still waiting on this compressor but we still got contactors to change and we still got a bunch of ems stuff to do so we'll be busy all right let's see what we got not the best definitely a bunch of oil down in that can let's see let's take these out and see what they look like oh yeah them are pretty dirty so that's the reason why we had so much oil backing up in there it's because these dryers are all plugged so it's not letting the oil flow throughout the system you can see all that oil just got trapped in here Man. well that's what we're gonna do right now is change these out just a little comparison of what the ones we're taking out look like compared to these new ones pretty dirty these things definitely needed to be changed okay so we got everything in compressors landed wirings in uh, let's see what else we got the vacuum pulled on it uh, I did drop a little bit of oil out of there and then we got contactors changed so that's pretty much it for this compressor um, we're not starting it up today because we're doing some EMS stuff with it which uh, he's doing over here right now all right we're putting in boards and whatnot and we're gonna be running these things off transducers but I think I'm gonna make that a separate video so uh, that's it for now I appreciate y'all watching make sure you like subscribe and uh, yeah thank you later